we have a few things to talk about coming to a close. The first thing is, look at this. 196 families, you can read, 14 countries, 38 states, 22 researchers. Not bad, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't know, not me. Okay, so, here's my pitch. It takes a really lot of work, as you all know, and I know you've all told me, and, and I'm so appreciative. But we really need you. I mean, we really, really do. We need people's expertise. We need your advice. We want you to get involved. You can see all our committees here. We have a new legislative committee um, being headed up by Angie Foster from California, and we had a great meeting today, and I'm gonna tell you something in a minute about that. But we have, as you can see, all these committees, and we really, really need experience, expertise, anything you got to offer. Because, we, as you can see, we are, growing and growing and growing. So please, if you have any uh, interest in any of these topics, these committees, come talk to me or Nick or the board, uh, the other chairs, Megan, Geraldine. We really, uh, I'm not gonna ask you to work 40 hours a week, Megan, oh. um, but it's really, it's what time you can give. But every input from all of you is really important to us. Really, really important. So one of the committees I want to, well, I want to say two things. Membership. Now, you're all members because when you decided to come to the conference, if you weren't a member, now you're a member. So, but we have membership and we have the registry. Two different things. Um, we would like you to tell your friends with uh, Children with PMS, the Facebook group, anybody, please join the membership because we want to know how many kids are in our group, how many diagnosed cases. We really want you to join the membership. Now again, you've all joined, so now you're going to get somebody else to join. And the registry, Megan's been talking about this for a couple days, and, well, a couple days. She's been talking about this nonstop for, for, for a year, but um, I think uh, the registry is different, and that if you join the registry, you also have to join the membership and vice versa. So we can answer any of those questions. If you have a question, then please do that. Okay, so what, 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 what? You're not hearing me very well? Okay. So one of the things, I just want to give you an example. You've heard about a lot of the other committee's examples. We'll talk about fundraising in a little bit. But one new committee that we're just starting, we're just going to plan, is legislative. So I wanted to show you something that's pretty cool. We met, um, Megan and I met with a lobbyist who spoke here this afternoon. Um, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry, government relations. We met with someone with government relations. That sounds kind of, you know. Um, but anyway, so, and he um, was emailing with us to put, you know, I really should have Megan talk about this, but put um, some language in an appropriations bill. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen, as you know, government relations, but, um, but it's so cool to see. So in the 300 page document, this is here and the U.S. government. How cool is that? So this is our first time getting into this and it's pretty exciting. So, so all of those committees, I think, maybe not ex as exciting as this, I'm not sure, but um, we really, really want you to get involved. Okay. So the dreaded fundraising. Okay, uh, over the last six years or so, um, we've had 
a fantastic board member who has headed up fundraising. And um, I'm going to talk about him in a minute now, so I'm not going to get all emotional about him right at the moment. But I would like um, Kurt to come up to give this year's fundraising awards. So, about fundraising, we need to lock the doors, right, so that nobody leaves. So I'm going I'm to prove that that's not the case, that we don't need to do that with this group. Uh, how many of you, I want to show of hands, how many new families are excused and not expected to have raised funds in the last year? Right here? No, no, you're fine. Sue. Sue, this way. Oh, here. No. <laughs> Sue, get closer. Okay, show of hands. How many of you have held a fundraising event? How many of you have asked family and friends to donate to the foundation? How many of you made personal contributions? Now that's love. That, that is cool. And I think that really makes us unique. You know, some fundraising is something we can all do. We're, we're coming out of here with all kinds of ideas on how we're going to go home and help our kids. And it's obvious that they have a wide range of abilities and needs, but fundraising is something that we can all do. When you came in, you were handed a couple of pamphlets that make this really easy. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it doesn't have to be complicated. Now, I'm going to mention some fundraising events that that we have had over the years. Um, my wife Denise and I were asked to be part of the fundraising committee um, all the way back in 06. Uh, we were newbies because our first conference was in 04, so we jumped right into it. And, um, you know, it's the families that have come forward over the years. Uh, Flip Flops and Lemon Drops, one of the very first ones. Uh, the Gibbons family from Oregon. Uh, what fun, you know, family, friends, food, charity auction, and martinis. And uh, Sue Knott from Florida replicated that a few years ago and had a very successful event. Uh, we've had uh, Sean Keats, I don't think Sean's here this year, is he? Uh, he did a first giving uh, online fundraiser, $27,000. Um, Sammy's Run ran five years, raised $50,000 over those five years. And we've had a couple of other runs. Uh, have a team Tabitha uh, down in Louisiana, the Engel family, the Fly family from Pennsylvania, did Steps for Sierra, a walkathon. Uh, we, we've had just a, a host of, of different programs in, in fundraising events. Cornhole tournament. Anybody uh, play with the bean bags? The cornhole tournament here? Yeah, that's a big deal uh, in the South. Uh, not so much in Iowa. <laughs> But, uh, oh, there was a lunch, there was a little lunch uh, in, in Dallas, not Dallas, uh, Houston, uh, about five, six years ago. Friends of uh, Brad and Geraldine Bliss had a, they call it the Great Love Luncheon, $80,000, and that was huge. You know, Geraldine just does it all. Um, but my point is that it doesn't have to be a big fundraising event. Uh, Craig Powell, researcher, uh, one of the great researchers we've, we've had here uh, these past few days, uh, told the group, and I thought it was awesome, that two or three hundred thousand dollars that Megan and Geraldine and the research committee have spent developing the registry and fellowships has been leveraged into tens of millions of dollars. because I'm a finance major and I'm supposed to be able to do that. So you invest a thousand dollars and it turns into a hundred grand. So that's the power of what we have here. Uh, whether it's $22 or $500 or a thousand dollars, it all really adds up. We need your help. Okay, so starting in 2010, uh, we started something called the Guardian Angel Awards. It goes to the top five fundraisers 
over the past two years, so two years coming into uh, each conference. And uh, I'm going to announce the top five. What I'd like is for each of the winners to come up here. Um, we're going to have uh, just a, a minute or so. Uh, we want to hear a description of your event. So we'll get everybody up here and then we'll, we'll do that. So starting number five. Uh, Phelan Lucky, Jennifer and Eric Randolph from Delaware. Our, <laughs> Jennifer, you need to come up. So they raised ten thousand nine hundred and fifty-one dollars. Raising for some of these Logan's Heroes, Mike and Deb LeClaire from Michigan. They do a motorcycle bike ride and a golf tournament. And they raise a lot of money. You're doing uh, another one coming up here, right, Mike? Number three, for the third time in a row, Annie's Golf Classic, Richard and Robert of Crunchy. almost $59,000 over the last two years. Number two, O'Boyle, $22 for 22Q. They're from Virginia, they do that in honor of Shannon, um, $85,000 over the last two years. To number one, I think they're going to be surprised because we've sort of framed this as a family fundraising event, but we're going to recognize the PMSF staff for raising This is a whole bunch of money, and uh, uh, we'd like to see other events. Uh, somebody steps up after every conference, so maybe it's you. Um, so let's start with Jen. Can you tell us just a, a, a minute or so about your event and how you did it? We don't get out very often, and so we decided we wanted to go out for St. Patrick's Day, and I was going to sell t-shirts to my friends, and we were going to... Um, uh, make people aware for Fayla McDermott and uh, started selling to my family on Facebook and uh, put it on the Facebook page and one thing went to another and we have at least one shirt in all of the 50 states. We are doing it again in March. Uh, it'll still be Fayla Lucky. Uh, it will have a new design and uh, we're hoping to go international. But I'm still working on it. Logan's Heroes. It's a local motorcycle run. We get as many people as we can together. Uh, we try to drum up all our friends and family. We couldn't do it without a lot of friends and extended family and obviously family. Uh, we're on our fifth annual cruise this year. Um, we uh, really appreciate a lot of the support we get from our local PMSF families, uh, the Corrells, the Chivos, Asnos, the uh, um, uh, Hobbies. And hopefully we'll see some more this year. We had met a lot of families last year, and uh, we really uh, we're really surprised by all the support. So if you ever so if you ever uh, if you ever consider doing something like this, it's very rewarding. It's, it is a little bit of work, but it's very rewarding. And uh, we, we're happy to to help out any way we can with suggestions or or anything else. And uh, we really want to thank the foundation for all the help they give us because they the, I can call them and they're more than willing to help. And uh, board members, thank you for all your work. That's, my wife and I, we first started coming to these, they were, they were really asked for people to come and, and uh, help with fundraising. We thought we couldn't possibly you know, have time for this, but uh, 
And we see all these other families work their butts off and do so much valuable work. And what we got out of the, the, the foundation, we could not do something. So uh, if you can, you got a, you got a hobby you like to do, it ain't hard to turn that into a fundraiser. So uh, uh, thank you for if you, if you can. So. And um, we started off doing basic fundraiser, uh, just doing a birthday appeal. Right? That was all I could handle. Every year on Annie's birthday, I would send a letter out to our family and friends just to um, ask them to donate to the foundation. And I, we raised a few thousand dollars the first couple of years. Then um, I wanted to take it up a notch, and we started doing the golf tournament. So this is our fifth year. Um, we do have a committee of friends and business associates that help plan it. So I would say if anybody's interested in doing it, I'd be more than well and willing to help you with whatever you need to do to get it started. I would suggest maybe having several families maybe go together and do one. But this year we're October 20th. We're expecting over 225 golfers. And one of the things that we do is uh, feel the Dermot syndrome gets 75% of the proceeds. And then we also give wounded warriors a big percentage, they get 15%, and then we find a local charity in our area, and they get 10%, and that's the one that does horse therapy. So it really makes a connection with um, the community, because a lot of the businesses won't donate unless it's a local charity. But then you also get the national one that a lot of people are aware of is Wounded Warriors. So um, I would say it is a lot of work, but a lot of your family and friends and network, they want to help in some way. And you'd be amazed how many people step up to help you when you start something. But if anybody likes to golf and wants to start something, I'd be willing to help you get it going. I, I won't do the work, but I'll give you the ideas and I'll give you the templates, anything you need. I didn't think I could pull off an event, um, and I don't golf, and I don't ride a motorcycle, so um, I have a laptop, and I seem to be on it a lot. So we just, the first year, we just did a, an email to friends and family, and it, we were kind of timid at first, and we were shocked at the response, and people were so happy to help in honor of our daughter's birthday. So every August, we sent out another email, and by the second year, we also mailed um, a letter. It was the same as the email, but it came in the mail, and we included an a already addressed envelope to the foundation. So this past year, we tracked that 75% of our donors, we had over 200 friends and family that sent anywhere from $22 to $5,000. And 75% um, of them used that little green envelope that I provided to them. I didn't stick a stamp on it, but I, it was pre-addressed. I even had people call me and say, I lost my envelope, and you mail me another. Um, so, 25% of our donors um, clicked online, so they probably looked at the email, they clicked online and did PayPal, 75% mailed a check, and um, we, we got donations from August, when her birthday is, through the end of the year, because the people that gave, um, you know, right before tax time, like to write their checks in December, and um, then we wrote, a, this is the first year we didn't write a handwritten thank you note, we wrote a form thank you note, but we had pictures of my daughter. And in response to the thank you note, we, we collected another $5,500 because people were just so touched. So, um, you know, we are all busy, but I think we all have loved ones that want to help us and they don't know how. And, you know, dropping off a lasagna is not going to, you know, help me for the rest of my life. <laughs> but, um, so, if, um, don't be afraid to try. Um, and um, it doesn't have to be around a birthday. We just use that as our excuse. As you all know, the Giving Challenge is, well, some of you might not know, the Giving Challenge is an online giving campaign um, that ran for 24 hours. And um, I'm proud to say that this group has accomplished something that no other nonprofit has ever accomplished um, in the Giving Challenge, and that's winning it twice in a row. Um, it's very rare. Yes. Um, that have participated in the Giving Challenge, their first year they do really, really well. And typically, the second year, um, not so well. So we switched gears and um, we came up with a, a, a different marketing campaign, which you all responded to. And the reason the Giving Challenge is so successful is because of you. 
my team and I put the marketing plan together and we implement it, but you are the ones that respond and you were the ones that made it happen. So I congratulate all of you for a great success and a great challenge. We're hoping to do it again. Um, we'll let you know. Of course, uh, watch your email boxes uh, for information. So hopefully we'll win it a third time in a row. Okay, um, still with fundraising, um, I would like to introduce Gary and Vicki Jones. Where are you, Gary? Somewhere? Way in the back. Come on up. Gary and Vicki are from the UK. And have made this is your second conference here? Yeah. And well I'm gonna let him tell you what he's been doing. I, I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook, but yeah, I would want to do the same or a couple of words, let you know what what we've done and it, it was off the back of last year's conference because we got so much out of it. Um, and we found out about the 22 to 22, so we did a couple of moments and started doing some fundraising from that. And then from Sammy's room, um, we found out about um, the Roman strolls. So I got one for Ben, he enjoys it. I, I guess I sort of enjoy it pushing it because you're getting a bit heavy, but it gets us out of the house. So it was. It was also, it didn't start as a fundraiser, it started as a bit of a, a release and opportunity for a bit, a bit of exercise. Um, and then a couple of people had said, well, why don't we start raising some funds? So we've done, I think it's four or five and um, 10k runs. Uh, early in the year we did um, two half marathons, pushing them. Um, we set up a website called bensbuggyruns.com. Um, we had a fundraiser a couple of weeks ago, so the, the funds from that are going to be split between Ben's school, foundation, um, and a trust fund for them. And we're, we're approaching around $20,000 that we've raised through that. Um, To me, it, it was um, it was the inspiration of seeing what the other people were doing, um, similar to what you said about the, you know, um, Logan's rock, feeling that you know you want to give back and want to do something yourself. So I think this was something that started very small, um, and there's lots of people now, our friends, who are doing things and are feeding back into that fund. We didn't think it was going to last that long. Um, foolishly, after a couple of beers, talked to Rich last night, and we're now, uh, well, I'm certainly next year we'll be doing a marathon, uh, pushing Ben and possibly his, his brother as well. So it's, it's going to grow. So um, yeah, yeah, and it was from the, the inspiration of Sammy Drum and all the work that everyone's doing. And I think the, the one thing that maybe will get mentioned, but I think as families come to this conference, um, I think it's. It's easy to forget, uh, and we need to remember that the people who are organising this and are doing all the work, they're in the same situation as we are, and their parents with the same kids, and so I think they need a, a big round of applause too. Um, so how much? How much goes to foundation? <laughs> Five thousand. Excellent. Okay, we got five hundred thousand for you, Treasury. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Thanks a lot. All right. Not start crying yet. Okay. So we're going to just touch on this. Uh, the next uh, few things we're going to do in research. Megan, are you going to give us a little? Yes, you are. 
Um, this really isn't a research update. I think you guys have taken in all the information you can for a weekend. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, give yourself a huge round of applause. We have 103 reconsented families from since um, Friday. So that means no I had multiple researchers ask how we get our families so engaged in research. Um, someone from Autism um, Science Foundation said she wanted our advice on how to engage families and she couldn't believe how responsive our families are and I of course was like, well of course they are. Uh, but it's, it's, this is huge and, and, and I know you don't do it just because we nag you, you do it because you want to help your family member. And, um, and so do we. And we, we will always try and keep the burden as low as possible, but we do appreciate the time and the effort it takes, and we know that you don't have time, and um, so we really can't thank you enough, and keep up the great work. Um, those, oh, we will let you know what, how the project will proceed and how we're going to get electronic health records from you as we get, get the um, details figured out. You'll have lots of coaching and training and hand-holding, so you know, we're not going to just tell you to give them to us and not tell you how. Um, so again, I want to thank you all for being so awesome. Um, and if you didn't get a chance to get down to the Boca Room, then you can go online and reconsent. You'll, you'll know exactly what to do. There's a, a message and it just tells you to check the boxes, just eight sentences. So am I leaving it? All right. You guys rock. Thank you. So just to follow up a little bit, um, we don't do a really good job of really communicating through the year on what is going on in research, but we're going to do better at that because um, what the research group has done is pretty phenomenal and we're going to communicate that a lot better. So um, if that's one of the committees you're interested in, please let us know. Okay, I do want to say I forgot one thing on the, it's not really fundraising, but we wanted to recognize Sarah Greenlaw Karl Mark. If you don't know, she's the one that wrote the app for the conference. She's not here, but um, we're going to send her something from the foundation because I think everybody really liked that. So thank you to Sarah. Okay, this is not good. Okay. So we've had a change in the board of directors, as hopefully you all know, and these three people are retiring. I like saying that. I think they're all younger than me, but um, so okay. Hold on. Okay. So, um, I don't know how many years she'll tell you, she'll tell you that Geraldine pulled her in and, you know, got the fish hook on her and reeled her in and, but she has worked so tirelessly. Um, as you can see, she's like an energizer bunny and that's how she works and she gets it done and Washington has not been the same. And I'm telling you, you cannot thank this woman enough. Megan O'Boyle.
we wouldn't be sitting here without the work that she's done because she's made us official, professional, and um, has given it her all. And I, I really, again, we cannot thank Priscilla Hackstead enough.
I wish I could say your name, but I really don't know how to. My name is Philip McDermott is a Trump teacher. And this is the first video of Philip McDermott in Germany. And this we are brand new, we are we have been founded in May this year. We, I think we have uh, done a good thing, uh, like a soccer team. <laughs> we have done it in a very fast time, like, because we have a year, which is for German uh, time scale. A minute, something like that. So thank you very much, I'm really surprised. And thank you. Okay, so this group, the UK group, Allison and Kelly, and could everyone say hi to Kelly? Because we had to say hi to Kelly. Hi, Kelly. I hope she's watching. So they have also been doing things for a very, very, very long time. And they are two dynamic ladies. And they have, as they are proud to say, the second largest gathering of Phelan McDermott Syndrome families in the world. And Katie and I had the privilege of going last year, and they had a couple hundred people there. So it was really fantastic. So, Kat, are you here? Kat, please come. Kat is representing the So um, I'm really happy that they're, they, if you see on Facebook, they are moving and shaking. They are doing a lot of things. They're fundraising. They're, they've been an official association for a few months. And so um, I really want to thank them. So we have another group that has been around a little bit, um, and they just became an association, and incredibly so, they, four or five, I'm not sure, families have come this year from Australia, and they just sent me their new logo, and I'd like to recognize Megan Tool. Who are really um, uh, 
uh, Platinum, I think, sponsors, uh, Cedar Street Advisors and Brookfield, and we want to thank all our sponsors. So, okay, so you've seen these crazy people running around in the green t-shirts. You see them still. And um, I think it was Rick who decided they should be the Fab Five, if you understand it, instead of the Fab Five. Um, and so um, I, I really, you know, I think you all know this, but besides, we pay a lot of money for AV, but we don't pay these people anything, but they run around with the, hooking up the computers and the microphones and making sure we have what we need. And of course, as you know, the app, and then we did the, and then the live stream. And the messages on Facebook, I think I, I didn't read many, but I saw it watching from Slovakia. Here I am in Vienna watching the live stream. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. So, um, do you want to say anything? So, uh, Rich, Stephanie, Rick, Eric, Kenneth. Do I have to take it? Anyway, I, I especially want to uh, thank uh, a couple of the spouses, uh, Rick, uh, Rick's wife, Annie, and Paul, and uh, especially also Eric, uh, Youngquist, uh, Amy Youngquist, because um, obviously they, they lost a lot of time with uh, their spouses having to, especially Amy, because uh, they didn't have a caretaker, so a lot of the time the nurse could hear, as you know how busy it is, they have three kids, and one of them is a very active uh, EMS child, so. Uh, and just real quickly, uh, we did give each other uh, nicknames here, and I just want to say who they were in a little bit. Uh, I'm 26.2 so I'm a marathoner, and you probably see me running everywhere, so I probably covered about 26 miles. This is Big Rig. I don't need an explanation for that. Uh, personality. Yeah, yeah. Personality. Uh, thanks to Stephanie. This is uh, her first conference here, and she was insistent that uh, she loved so much being able to watch the new stream that she was insistent on uh, participating. I said, look, you're going to have a lot going on. She said, no, 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 I, I, I really want to do, come and maybe spice up a little bit of what you guys are doing. Okay. So, Canadian Spice, it was her new name. <laughs> and I thought I was a, a geek uh, nerd with all the uh, stuff with uh, Ustream and some of the stuff that I have. But he takes the cake. I mean, he brought, that's he tech. Eric takes so. All the stuff that he brought, that's all his equipment that he has purchased himself and, and I mean, I'm sorry, Eric, and very fortunate because my camera that I used a couple of years ago broke when I got up here, so thank you very much for the equipment there. And then, last but not least, this is Headbanger. <laughs> now, most of, let me explain. Most everybody that's come down here probably has taken some extra time to go see the parks, Universal, Disney, you know, all that stuff. We're, trying, we're talking uh, Sunday before the conference to uh, see if we can have just a little uh, meeting on the phone to go over some of the stuff. So somebody suggested, can we, most of us are getting in a Wednesday. How about we get together Wednesday night? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, well, he said, um, Kenneth, Kenneth said, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. I do get in Wednesday, but I'm like, well, what's, what's the... He says, well, so he did arrive Wednesday. Well, through whatever he came in here, the reason that he couldn't come to the meeting uh, with us tonight because living from Costa Rica, um, like some of the music that I grew up with, he also grew up with Kiss and Def Leppard. There was a Kiss and Def Leppard in Tampa, so that's where he was on Wednesday night. Okay, no, not that. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. I appreciate it. If any of you on our next conference uh, would like to uh, participate in this, usually Thursday and Friday is the day that we really have a lot of schedules, so keep that in mind. Thank you. So you know, we, we keep talking about how it's about families, and it is about families. Um, I hope I didn't miss anyone, but it's 
possible. But if you can, you look at this list, all the family presenters, I mean, that's pretty cool. And uh, that's what we do every conference. Yeah, we have professionals, we need that. But we also have a lot of family presenters. And um, I'll, I'll just do this real quick. Rick Wood, would you stand up? Tiffany Angle, Geraldine Bliss, Megan O'Boyle, Dana Wingrow, Lorraine Judy Jones, Diane Lenahan, Sally Richards, Cindy Delaney, Kathy Brown, Amber Carell, David Mancini, Ryan Cox, and Debbie Graham. Thank you so much. for In It to Win It, but I do know that Terry Dutz and Jennifer Mancini worked pretty hard at it, so I'd like to give them a round of applause too.
in his person. And um, he really is like a brother to me, although my brother is in the audience. But, um, <laughs> Uh, I really, he's in there every single time, he will do anything you ask him, sometimes he's a little slow, but, you know, he means well, but, um, just like my brother, yeah, oh, um, and so I, he really, um, believes in the foundation, he has a huge heart for the foundation, and, um, I don't think we'll ever get rid of them, and uh, we don't want to. And the the impact of the year award goes to our vice president, Dave Asimov. Thank other families, her brainchild, she's stuck with it, she's gone through the growing pains, and it is a pain to grow sometimes. Um, there's a lot of paperwork involved in it, and, um, you know, I don't think a minute goes by that Sue isn't thinking about this foundation, and she said one night, uh, <laughs> she said, when I go to bed at night, and I've seen that there are four children in Facebook that are being hospitalized, those are like four of my children. So I think, um, I, I'm sure all of you can say a lot of wonderful things about Sue, but none of them would really cover how wonderful she is and what she does for our, our families. Not just our children, but for, for us. And um, it's not easy to hold a foundation together, but it's really important. And we are one, and we shall remain as one, and we can do anything. Um, I'm sure there's a more eloquent way of saying, as one, we can do everything, but I can't remember it. Um, so, uh, could we please have appropriate appreciation for Sue Lerner. 